welcome to the deep dive. Uh, we know there's just a ton of information out there and figuring out what actually matters. It takes time. Right. It can be pretty overwhelming. Exactly. So our job here is to, you know, cut through that noise, give you the key insights fast. We try to find those surprising facts, maybe make it a bit entertaining too. And hopefully save you some time along the way. Precisely. So today we're doing a deep dive into, well, portable power, specifically the Anchor Soli X C1000 and uh, its solar panel too. Yeah, our mission for this one is to really unpack the details from our source material. That's excerpts from Anchor Soli X C1000, the powerhouse portable station. Sure. We want to get into what makes this specific one tick, you know, how it actually performs, and who should uh, really consider getting one. Okay. The source even mentions the reviewer started out a bit skeptical, which is interesting. We'll dig into how Anchor apparently won them over. Oh, I like that angle. Because, <laughs> let's be honest, we've all seen products hyped up as the ultimate solution that, well, just aren't. Mm-hmm. Happens all the time. So let's figure out how this Oldie XC1000 supposedly stacks up against those claims. Does it actually deliver? What are the real takeaways for you listening? Let's get into it. So imagine you're looking at another one of these power station things, and you're just feeling a bit, mm, eh, you know, <laughs> seen it all before. Yeah, a bit jaded. That's exactly where the reviewer started with this, Anchor Soli XC1000. They actually said they were a little skeptical. Okay. But then after putting it through its paces for weeks, the conclusion was pretty clear. Anchor apparently crafted something really rather special. Ah, so it won them over. Yeah, that shift from skeptical to impressed, yeah. that's where it gets interesting. And uh, a big part of that seems to be the core tech inside. It's built around a LIFEPO4 battery. That's lithium iron phosphate. Okay, LIFEPO4. What does that actually mean in practice? Well, the big thing is longevity. Anchor rates this battery for, get this, 2,500 charge cycles. 2,500. Yeah, which means, like, you could use it every single day for almost seven years. Seven years. Daily. Before the capacity drops below 80%. That's wow. huge. It really changes how you think about it, right? It's not just another gadget. It's more like a long-term investment. Wow, okay. Seven years of daily uses. Yeah. That's genuinely impressive for anything portable. And the capacity itself. It's uh, 1,017 watt hours. That's right. 1,017 watt hours. So... Translate that for us. What can you actually run with that much juice? Well, think about running small appliances off grid, keeping all your gadgets charged on a long trip, or you know, having essential backup power at home if the lights go out. Maybe powering a CPAP machine for a few nights, or keeping your Wi-Fi and laptop going during an outage. It's pretty substantial. Gotcha. And what about the unit itself, like the physical thing? The source describes it as really solid and well-built. It's definitely on the chunkier side, apparently. Weighs around 17 kilograms, and that's without the solar panel. 17 kilos. Okay, so not exactly lightweight. No, but that weight, that heft, it kind of speaks to its heavy-duty build quality. You know, it's not flimsy. And while it's maybe not something you'd call grab-and-go, it does have a sturdy, foldable handle that apparently makes moving it around surprisingly okay manageable let's say okay manageable heft i can picture that hmm. but beyond just holding power connecting stuff is key right how many plugs and ports does this thing have it's pretty stacked on the front panel you get four regular ac outlets like your wall socket Four. okay then two usb c ports and one of those can push out up to 100 watts which is great for like Charging a laptop quickly. Right. Plus two standard USB-A ports, a uh, car style, 12V outlet, and even a couple of those DC barrel ports. It's a really versatile array. That sounds like it covers pretty much everything. Did the reviewer uh, test that versatility, like plug a bunch of things in at once? Oh, yeah. The source gives some good examples. Like, picture this. Charging your laptop, juicing up your phone and camera batteries, running a small blender, and having a camping light plugged in all at the same time. Seriously. All from the one unit. Apparently so. It really makes you think, you know, how much flexibility do you actually need? Because yeah. this seems to offer a lot. Okay. That is versatile. Yeah. Now, the solar side of things, that's often where these stations can be a bit hit or miss. How's the included solar panel? Is it easy to use? The reviewer seemed to really like it, said it was a joy to use, actually. High praise. Yeah. It just unfolds easily. It's got kickstands built right in so you can angle it towards the sun properly. Oh, okay, Andy. And it uses what they called a foolproof, alligator-free connection system. Mean. Meaning no messing about with awkward clamps or clips. It's just a simple, secure plug. Plug and play, basically. 
Okay, sounds user-friendly, mm -hmm. but how well does it actually charge this station? What kind of power were they getting? So under direct sunlight, they were consistently getting around 60 to 70 watts of actual charging power going into the unit. 60 to 70 watts, okay. Which, on a good, clear summer day, means you could get a full charge in about uh, 18 hours or so. 18 hours for a full charge from the sun. How does that compare? Well, the source notes, it might be slower than the fastest panels out there. But, and this is key, the convenience of having it all in one foldable piece apparently makes it really practical. Easy to use, often beats slightly faster, but uh -huh. midly, right? Absolutely. Convenience is yeah. huge, especially outdoors. Okay, so solar charging is decent and easy. What about charging it from the mains, from a wall socket? How fast is that? Ah, now that is where it gets really impressive, according to the review. Oh. Anchor claims you can go from 0 to 80% charge in just one hour if you use two AC inputs. One hour to 80%? Wow. Did the tests back that up? Pretty much, yeah. They said the tests came very close to that claim. And even just using a single AC input, it's still charged fully in about two hours. Two hours from empty to full. That's quick. It's really fast. Yeah. Means you can top it up quickly before a trip or during a brief stop with power access. Very useful. Definitely. And this speed, combined with the capacity, makes it sound like more than just a camping gadget. The review mentioned using it during a power cut. Exactly. That's where it shifted from being just a camping companion into a dependable home backup, a real lifeline. So what did they run off it during the outage? Let's see. They powered their Wi-Fi router essential, right? Oh, yeah. Critical infrastructure. Totally. Uh, a couple of LED lamps kept the fridge going on its eco mode and even kept their partner's laptop charged up all evening. Wow. Fridge, Wi-Fi, lights, laptop. Yeah. And that's pretty much covering the essentials. It really is. And a big part of why it can handle that reliably, especially the electronics, is the pure sine wave inverter. Okay. Technical term. Why is that important? It basically means the power it outputs is clean and stable, just like the power from your wall socket. Cheaper units sometimes have modified sine waves, which can cause issues with sensitive stuff, flickering screens, weird noises, even damage. Ah, uh, right. So pure sine wave means your laptop or, say, medical equipment won't freak out. Exactly. No flickering, no unexpected shutdowns. It just works smoothly. It turns a potential backup headache into just seamless power. And noise levels. Oh. Because my neighbor's petrol generator during the last outage was loud. Ah, yeah, that's another big plus here. Compared to those noisy petrol things, the Silly X C1000 is apparently almost inaudible, save for a soft hum. Almost inaudible? That's a game changer for using it inside. Huge difference, yeah. Especially overnight or if you're trying to work. Okay, so it's capable, it's fast charging, it's quiet, and it plays nice with sensitive gear. What about safety? Battery management. That also got high marks. Anchor has built-in protections against, you know, all the usual suspects. Hmm. Overcharging, overcurrent, short circuits, overheating. The stuff you worry about with big batteries. Right. So it gives you total peace of mind, as the source puts it. And there's a simple little LCD screen on the front. What does that show you? Just the key info, nice and clear. Input watts, output watts, how much battery percentage is left. And it even gives you an estimate of how long it can run whatever you've got plugged in. Oh, the runtime estimate is handy. Very. Helps you manage the power. It all ties back to reliability, right? knowing you can count on it safely when things are unpredictable. Makes sense. Okay, it sounds pretty fantastic, but uh, nothing's perfect. Were there any downsides mentioned? Any catches? Well, yeah, a couple of considerations. That weight we mentioned, the 17 kilos. Right, the heft. It's definitely unwieldy if you're like an ultralight backpacker planning a multi-day trek deep into the wilderness. It's not designed for that kind of use. Fair enough. It's portable, not pocketable. Exactly. And also, the solar panel performance, while convenient, is still dependent on sunshine, obviously. Patchy clouds or bad angles will reduce the input. But that's just how solar works. It's not really a fault of the specific panel. True. A limitation of the tech itself. What about the price? You mentioned it wasn't cheap earlier. Correct. It sits at the premium end of the market. It's an investment. So is it worth that premium price? The argument made in the source is basically, yes, the durability that incredible battery cycle life we talked about and just how versatile it is, all that justifies the cost for the right person. Okay. Plus, you know, Anchor generally has a good reputation for quality products and decent customer support, which adds a bit of confidence to. Right. Brand reputation matters for something like this. Okay. So wrapping this all up. Yeah. What does this deep dive tell us? Who is this SLIX C1000 really built for? 
Summing it up, the source gives it a strong recommendation, but specifically for uh, serious campers, van lifers, and anyone who values dependable, long-lasting, portable power. Serious users, basically. Yeah, people who will really use it, whether that's for properly safeguarding their home against power cuts or for planning those longer trips off the grid where reliable power is essential. For those uses, it's described as a real heavyweight performer. A heavyweight performer. I like ah. that. It seems like a solid investment in, well preparedness and maybe even a bit of freedom. Definitely. It's impressive tech. So there you have it. Our deep dive suggests the Anchor Soli XC1000 is a genuinely versatile and crucially dependable power solution. It really seems to bridge that gap between having backup power at home and taking serious power on the road for adventures. It really does. And, you know, thinking about that longevity, that near decade of potential daily use, it prompts a bigger question, perhaps. Yeah. How might having access to truly dependable, long-term, portable power like this actually change how you, the listener, approach things? Like preparedness for emergencies, or even just how you plan your leisure time, your trips. What possibilities open up when your power source isn't just a temporary fix, but something built to last? 